Hello, we're Andy, the Maniacal Cinephile, and for All Hallows' Eve, we're taking a look at Trick or Treat. Ah, the rock and roll horror comedy starring Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne. Rock and roll will never die. At least not this Halloween. Huh? No, Evil, the other one. Andy, we should decorate for my Halloween party. Ooh, good idea. Done! Trick or Treat is an anthology horror film written and directed by Michael Doherty, also known for Krampus and Godzilla, King of the Monsters. The movie was based on Doherty's 1996 animated short film, Season's Greetings. While at NYU, Doherty animated the short with his blood, sweat, and tears. No, really! He cut his hand while working on an animation cell, so the blood at the end is real. When life hands you blood, make art. I call this piece Victim 47. Trick or Treat stars seven-year-old Quinn Lord, Dylan Baker, X-Men's Anna Paquin and Brian Cox, plus Rochelle Eights. Ooh, she was the voice of Rochelle in Left 4 Dead 2. Trick or Treat had a $12 million budget and was shot in Vancouver during a rainy November. Most of the outdoor scenes have a tarp suspended above the actors. The film was scheduled for release in October of 2007, but the studio shelved it for two years before dumping it onto DVD in 2009. And I'm not sure why. One theory is it was delayed to avoid competition from Saw 4. Another theory is it was fallout from Superman Returns' poor performance, which Doherty co-wrote. This movie continued to hurt people even after its release. I admire that. Doherty's theory is that the studio just didn't know what to do with this movie during the age of torture porn and Japanese remakes. He also suspects it's because a lot of kids die in this movie. <laughs> Despite the neglect, people kept talking about Trick or Treat, and once it was released, it received critical acclaim and developed a strong cult following. People go crazy about this film. It really is a cult. Trick or Treat! Trick or Treat! You see more and more merchandise in stores every year. I consider it a modern classic, and now watch it every Halloween. So before they cut the hours even more, let's go trick-or-treating! The film takes place on Halloween in the fictional town of Warren Valley, Ohio, Michael Doherty's home state. Werewolves, zombies, and demons, they've all descended on the normally sleepy town of Warren Valley, Ohio. Werewolves, zombies, and a demon? The news tried to warn them. The movie stitches together four of Doherty's short stories told in a non-linear narrative. They should have let me stitch the film together. I mean, just look at my embroidery. Lately, Evil's been crafting a lot, but Dr. Odcoitus says it'll help with his anger. Ow! Son of a bitch! I pricked my finger! At the center of the story is Sam, an ancient impish spirit disguised as a trick-or-treater. Sam appears in each story to enforce the traditions and rules of Halloween. The name of the character is inspired by Sam Hain. Well, actually, little buddy, it's pronounced Samhain, the ancient Celtic festival of the dead, which modern Halloween is derived. Nobody likes a know-it-all. Where'd you buy that booze, Evil? Huh? Nowhere. It has pumpkin spice, so they practically forced it on me. In the opening, Henry returns home with his wife, Emma, who hates Halloween. Before the night is even over, she blows out a jack-o'-lantern and tears down the decorations, which is against Sam's rules. <laughs> That's how I feel on laundry day.
Meanwhile, her husband is distracted. And here we see the porn star in her natural habitat. Henry later finds his wife's remains decorating the front yard. Ah! Ah! However, keep an eye out for that robot costume. The couple, and many other characters, continue to pop up in the background. In our first story, Charlie, an obese vandal who smashes jack-o'-lanterns, is caught stealing candy by Principal Stephen Wilkins. That can't be good for your diabetes, Charlie. Uh... Why wait? Let's amputate those feet right now! Mr. Wilkins lectures Charlie on how the rules and traditions of Halloween must be obeyed. That's right. There's another tradition. Always check your candy. So if you get pennies and floss, you know whose house to egg. So it wasn't good for his diabetes. No, it turns out that the principal is poisoning candy. While dragging in the body, Wilkins is interrupted by the kids in the next segment, wondering who had the chocolate runs all over the porch. We also get our first glimpse of Sam. Okay, which neighbor is handing out cats? Wilkins tries burying Charlie and another child, but is repeatedly interrupted by his son, Billy. Charlie Brown's an asshole! <gasps> yeah. Even the neighbor, Mr. Krieg, gets in on the interruptions. Septic tank is backing up. It stinks like a dead whore out here! It's true. They have a smell. Wilkins eventually finishes up and heads inside to take care of Billy and his jack-o'-lantern. He went from Lazy Charlie to Lazy Susan. But don't forget to help me with the eyes. That's why Evil Andy gives me a stencil. But they still look funny. Sometimes, I wonder if I could have been a good dad. You know what? You'd probably leave just like your father. He loved me! You want a drink or something? Sure. Four kids, Macy, Sarah, Chip, and Schrader, meet Rhonda, a Halloween fanatic. Is that Rhonda the retard? Hey, you shouldn't call someone the R word. Rhonda? The group travels to a rock quarry where Macy tells the urban legend of the Halloween school bus massacre via a sepia-toned flashback. My memories also have a brown filter. Because they're shitty. 30 years ago, eight mentally challenged and disturbed children died in a school bus on Halloween. The driver had been paid by their so-called parents to dispose of them, and he was the only survivor of the crash. <gasps> it's a sad story. They didn't get to eat any of that candy. The group offers the dead children eight jack-o'-lanterns as tribute. If only someone offered those kids eight life preservers. As the group investigates the quarry, they pull a terrifying prank on Rhonda, posing as zombies. Once exposed, Schrader defends Rhonda and a jealous Macy kicks a pumpkin into the water, extinguishing the flame. Ugh. That can't be good. That's right, little buddy. Just like your Halloween party, that pumpkin's gotta be lit. 
because the real school bus children then rise from their watery grave. <laughs> As Sarah is dragged off, the group flees, but Rhonda reached the elevator first and says deuces as the zombie kids gobble up the pranksters. Rhonda then shares a moment with Sam before returning home. Is it time for my segment now? No? Okay. I'll be waiting in my trailer. Lori, a virginal, shy young woman, gets dressed with her sister Danielle and some friends. Whatever happened to trick-or-treating? <sighs> Puberty. Last year we were in Tampa. The little peeping Tommy is Quinn Lord, the actor who plays Sam. <laughs> Ladies, there are children out here. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, your kid's no angel. No, really, he's a demon. The girls pick up dates, except Lori, who wants her first time to be... Please don't say it. Special. She decides to enjoy the festival and will join them later in the woods. Remember to be yourself, but play hard to get. Punch him in the groin, and then cover yourself in slippery baby oil. However, her friends have found her a hot young date. Is he young? Cute. Uh. And you know what? She better consider herself lucky, because that giant baby is actually the great child from 13 Ghosts. She's a big girl. She can take care of herself. Mom always said she was the runt of the litter. Well, that's only because she was premature and had chest hair. Meanwhile, a vampire that's been sucking women dry attacks Lori in the woods. <laughs> But this is one Red Riding Hood who shouldn't be afraid of the big bad wolf. At Sheep's Meadow, more than autumn leaves fall from trees. Although a pile of leaves and corpses are fun to jump into. However, it's not Lori, but the vampire who turns out to be Old Man Wilkins. And he would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling girls. Who are you people? Huh. Must be some kind of liberal feminist group. Lori then appears, joining the wolf pack as they tear off their skin. <laughs> Is this like when a girl comes home and takes off her bra? It's nice that the usual female victims are actually the predators. Werewolves. After all, it's the female lion that hunts. I also like how this transformation sets itself apart by being a gruesome striptease. Also, when you rewatch the movie, the dialogue is a clue that they're werewolves. Open the door or we'll huff and we'll puff. I ate some bad Mexican. And she's not talking about a chalupa. Something I noticed for the first time is that you can see Mrs. Henderson pushing Coach Taylor in the hot dog costume. Coach Taylor was in a hot dog costume, but f***ing a pig. Oh, yeah! Watch out for monsters. I can't believe she was a werewolf. Yes, I can. In the end, Sam watches as the girls feast on their dates. Maybe Sam should see a shrink. Although I can't really recommend mine. I still feel the electroshock therapy. <laughs> Lastly, Mr. Krieg, a bitter old man with a secret, spends his night scaring children and stealing their candy with the help of his dog, Spite. You're a mean one, Mr. Krieg. But I do like your dog. Ow, ow, ow. The actor, Brian Cox, actually wanted Krieg to look like an old rocker and horror director, John Carpenter. But unfortunately, I'm a little big bigger than John Carpenter, so I, I ended up looking more like Jerry Garcia from The Grateful Dead than... <laughs> We know X-Men's Brian Cox and Anna Paquin appear, but James Marsden, a.k.a. Cyclops, can be heard on the TV. 
Baked goods and crops were left out as offerings for the dead. For stealing candy, Sam gives Creek's home an extreme makeover. Halloween edition! Get the hell off my- Oh my gourd! Surprisingly, that blood was already there. Are you sure? Because I don't see his doggy anymore. He's fine. Speaking of dead pets, Sam's next trick came to him after watching Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Sam's weapon of choice, of course, being a razor blade candy bar. <laughs> I'd react the same way if it had coconut. <laughs> Rock candy. Not just for cutting the roof of your mouth. Demon Sam, Demon Sam, does whatever a demon can. Look out, here comes a Demon Sam. Obviously, this isn't your ordinary trick-or-treater. Sam is revealed to be a demonic, pumpkin-headed child. <laughs> The shape of the head is a baby skull mixed with a pumpkin. Doherty wanted it to look like Sam carved and stitched his own face to look like a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> Creek must have remembered Zombieland's second rule, the double tap. However, this kid will not stay down for his nap. I recommend NyQuil. We then get another nod to John Carpenter. You gotta be fucking kidding me. You gotta be fucking kidding. Now with the upper hand and armed, Sam goes to deliver the death blow, but instead impales a treat. <laughs> the Latka chocolate bar was actually named after co-producer Peter Latka. The candy also makes an appearance in Krampus. Satisfied with Krieg's food offering, Sam takes his leave. And when I come back next year, you better have king size! No, really, he's crazy! He'll break your arm! <laughs> if the wheezing and cheek scar didn't give it away, the photos burning in the fireplace reveal that Krieg was the bus driver. Well... That explains why he's a lonely alcoholic. Evil, stop. Every time you drink, I forget more of the alphabet. A, B, C, G, L, M, N, Q, Z, ah, heck. Later, a wiser Mr. Krieg gives out candy to the kids. Thanks, Mr. Krieg. Great mommy costume. I can't tell if it's the bandages or because he looks 3,000 years old. Krieg then hears one last knock on the door. It opens, revealing the resurrected school bus children. Trick or treat. In the final frames, the children get their revenge by devouring Mr. Krieg. But if they eat too much junk food on Halloween, they'll get sick. Michael Doherty wanted to create a film that perfectly captured the childish, mischievous fun of Halloween. He also wanted to give Halloween its own mascot, kind of like Santa or the Easter Bunny. In both areas, he succeeded. Sam has quickly become a horror icon. You know you've made it when you get your own sexy costume. It's fitting that a movie that was shelved is now displayed on shelves all over. See, I even got my own Sam action figure. Pretty cool, huh? Whether it's Trick or Treat or Krampus, Doherty is great at world building. The striking set designs perfectly add to the fairy tale atmosphere and bring the movie to life. The character designs are always unique, colorful, and sinister, right down to the adorable 
yet intimidating Sam. Trick or Treat skillfully balances the horror and campy elements while melding four stories. I especially love the structure and attention to detail in the script. If you rewatch the opening, technically the ending, Sam, Rhonda, the werewolves, and the zombie kids are exactly where they should end up. Trick or Treat has many influences, such as Creepshow, Tales from the Crypt, Gremlins, The Twilight Zone, and Pulp Fiction. Doherty actually wrote the script to the scores of Halloween and Poltergeist. Composer Douglas Pipes drew inspiration from Doherty's playlist, plus Bernard Herrmann's Psycho score. I love how Pipes even played around with the trick-or-treat rhyme. My only complaint is that there's no sequel, even though they teased one all the way back in 2013. It says, make a sequel. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, uh, all right, let's make Trick or Treat 2. It's been seven years. You made your Godzilla movie. Now make Trick or Treat 2. Come on. Do something. Ooh, maybe it's on a shelf somewhere. Nope. Not this one. I was really hoping Trick or Treat would become what John Carpenter was trying to do with Halloween 3. I would love an anthology series that told different spooky tales centered around Halloween. My favorite horror anthology, of course, being Glenn Danzig's Veronica. Really? No! Somehow Danzig made boobies boring! How? In conclusion, this is a fun tribute to a time when horror tried to scare and entertain. Trick or Treat is the perfect movie to get you into the Halloween spirit, and has appropriately become an October tradition. This has been Andy the Maniacal Cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time. Ooh, the trick-or-treaters must be out. Come on, let's go! Ah, hello. I was just talking about you in my basement. Ah, staying in character. That deserves some candy. Oh, what the heck, Evil? I gave you money to buy candy! True, but the candy store was right next to the liquor store. I made my choice. No, oh, not again. Sorry, buddy. Cool costume. Happy Halloween. are getting more aggressive. the one you want. Get out here, evil. Evil? Huh? <laughs> 
My emergency Pop-Tart! Here you go, Sammy. You can have it. Happy Halloween! Jeez, how can this year get any worse? <laughs>